Hey lovelies, welcome to Crash the Stash. Um, I'm Alexa Dobler and I am bringing you this fun journal project today. So it is a junk journal, you can use whatever papers and things you have on hand, but I'm gonna show you what you can do if you don't have papers. Um, we will be using this envelope as our main journal and just some white paper and a jelly plate. I'm grabbing a ton of my Sean Petit stencils to play on my jelly plate and make all my pages. So when you open your journal, you've already got background pages ready to go. So I will show you a few different techniques as we go and I'll hop on here and let you know each time kind of what I'm doing. But what you're gonna need is a jelly plate, a brayer, and some paints. Um, you can lay it on as thick or thin as you like. Thinner is usually better. Uh, that way you're kind of building up those layers. And as you can see, one way you can just kind of roll it out and stamp it onto your paper, and you're already gonna get some interesting texture. I always have a piece of paper on the side that I can wipe my brayer off onto because that paper then ends up looking really cool too. So here I'm gonna lay a stencil down and press through it with the black paint on it. And then I'm going to, on the other side, just press it down and you'll see I get kind of the ghost print of that stencil. Also, I do rub the stencils off onto that um, wipe off page because you will end up with such cool texture and things. Here I am putting color down through the stencil and then flipping it over and kind of wiping off any excess always just adds more and more texture. The other thing you can do is take a mask or a stencil and a little makeup brush and apply your paint through it. Always flipping it over, kind of wiping it off, you get awesome, awesome marks on your jelly plate. Now, if you let that dry, you can then go over top with some white, a nice, thin layer and you'll pull up all of that stuff. Um, this first pull that I do, I didn't have quite enough white. So <laughs> you wanna have enough that you actually pull up some of that paint, um, but you do want it thin enough that it doesn't just smush it all around. So give it a nice good press, pull it up. You got all this cool grungy goodness. Now there's still stuff on your plate that is totally fine. That is how you get all that, those layers built up. So if you have used a jelly plate, you've probably experimented with how to build up those grungy layers, but if not, it's definitely a fun thing to experiment, try your hand at new things. This is one great technique is to start by stenciling onto the jelly plate some of what, so if you think of it in reverse, this is gonna be what's the top layer once you pull it up. So I did some of the mark making, stencil some numbers stencils and look at that looks so cool the numbers i did do reverse so that once i pull my print they are actually the right way but you could do it either way it still looks cool and then i'm going to put on my layer of white give it a really solid press and pull it up and look at that grungy goodness so good so i'm going to keep playing and kind of going through that same pattern of different ways of applying, wiping it off, pulling through stencils, adding layers on layers, and you will see how I make all the pages for inside this journal. All of the stencils I am using will be listed in the description box below. But if there's a specific one you're seeing and you're trying to match up which one it is, definitely leave a question in the comments and we'll get back to you. Either Sean or I will let you know exactly which stencil it is 
These are awesome stencils, especially for jelly plates. Um, you have some nice big openings and some cool patterns that let you create all kinds of cool designs. This print is a great example of using similar tones. Um, so while your stencils will be prevalent, they won't stand out quite as much. It'll just kind of create this interesting texture, uh, make you want to look a little closer to see what each of those is. Um, if you use different colors and a little more contrasting colors, like I did the purple and the yellow, those you will obviously see a little more distinctly than the ones where you're using sort of three tones of the same color. Now this print didn't have a ton of the stencil that came through. It was a little really grungy and beautiful, but I wanted some more of the stencil marks to come through. So I'm just laying down the stencil on the jelly plate and pressing that print down. So you can always add layers as things dry, add another layer, and it totally changes the look of it. Now we're gonna work on our cover. So this is just an envelope that I covered with gesso, but now I'm gonna use my jelly plate the same way um, that I did on the pages for the inside. Sort of gonna use my envelope as one of my papers and just start printing onto it. And as you'll see, I do a little bit of the printing from my jelly plate and then pretty soon I'll just start mark making right onto the actual envelope. But it's a great way to get some color laid down quickly. Um, and here you can see I'm kind of using my brayer to get some of those cool texture marks, that sort of thing. So definitely it's one of those moments of playing around, seeing what you like, and then you'll find your direction as you go. So here's where I start to just play with my color, actually just from my brayer. Um, I'm using my jelly plate to mix a little because I actually really like how it mixes on there. So I... Um, tend to play with paint on there even if I'm applying directly to it. And here I'm just pressing on getting the last of that paint. It's a great way to make sure you don't lose any paint and use it all up. And now I'm going to be using some black. Um, I know Sean always talks about how black and white are your neutrals and it helps kind of push things back, pull things forward, or just pull everything together. So I decided to start going in with my black through this number stencil. I love this one. Um, I don't know why it just is so cool I think um, and then again working on the inside of my booklet so this will be the inside cover but I figured you want it all to be done so whatever I'm doing to the front I'm doing to the back and to the inside as well and again bringing that black forward kind of pushing back some of those craziness patterns <laughs> and just having fun
And here I close it up and see what I like about it. And then I see that, you know what? It could probably use a bright color. So I grab some of this lime green and start adding in some more numbers, kind of just to give it a nice little pop so that um, it doesn't all kind of look dark. Uh, and I love how this looks on top of those colors, kind of really ties it all together. One of the great things about this is it has a nice flap. So I've taken it and I've sewn down the middle and on the edges just to give a cool look on the edges. But that flap of your envelope now is a perfect spot to hold things for you. So I'm taking all my pages now and I'm going to trim them down to the size that I want. Um, kind of playing around, looking around, trying to decide. So then I basically just cut them all to the same size and I put it in the middle. And now I'm gonna do a simple binding technique where I put a hole in the middle and then one towards the top and one towards the bottom. And make sure you kind of line it all up. And then you take your thread. I have a nice thick thread here and a pretty thick needle as well. It helps you kind of maneuver it better. Go in through the middle from the inside and you're going to come out either the top or the bottom and then go to the opposite side. And then you'll come back through the middle and I always like to make sure that the two ends that I'm about to tie are on either side of that string going down the middle so you kind of secure it doubly there. Um, I usually do about two or three knots just to make sure it's really tight and then trim off my excess and it's good to go and look how cute we've got this book that is ready to go with all these cool pages and perfect oh throw some tags in that pocket because you know you're gonna want some later and now I crash my stash and grab some of this fabric that I had and I'm just gonna rip off a piece and create a tie that wraps around and tucks in and it's super cute I decided to that it needed one more thing on the cover. So I grabbed a tag and decided to create a fun little tag to put in the front there. And I'm going to use that same fabric to put a little ribbon on the top of my tag. And then I decided I really wanted like a little pocket, but I didn't want to cover anything up. So I found a piece of plastic, like, um, like a little cellophane bag, and I cut off a little piece and I sewed it right to the cover and it totally works and it's this perfect little pocket. So all those extra tags, I can create new ones, change it out on the front so it can always have a different feel um, depending on my mood. And here's the finished product. I absolutely love how it looks and look at all these pages. I cannot wait to open my art journal and start creating and not have to worry about that blank page staring at me because look at these gorgeous starts that I already have on these backgrounds. Um, so much fun to create and I will surely create lots of cool stuff on here and share on my YouTube and my Instagram. 
but I'm so grateful for you guys watching. I hope maybe if you feel inspired, you'll go create your own envelope journal. It's super easy and man, playing with your jelly plate is fun. Give it a go. I'm sure you will have tons of fun, especially when you have these cool stencils. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed.